today in this sixth installment of the series best ever unboxing review video accessories i'm going to talk to you about the video transmitter i purchased to go with the whole setup now hopefully you've been watching the series of videos by the go and you are a subscriber you would have by now know that i'm setting up a cable cam rig from the gh5 cage video monitor bracket monitor cage monitor video transmitter receiver to hang on a dji rowan s gimbal all dangling in the sky from cable cam so i decided to go back to that project since flying quadcopters is getting more and more restrictive you've seen the trials and tribulations up to this stage haven't powered it up yet that's all coming in this mysterious label box it contains the Axoon C9 II Pro dual band wireless video transmitter system. 860 bucks. What do you get? On the box, it's a C9 II Pro wireless video transmission system. 2.4 and 5 gigahertz dual band. What's the other spool they say? Axoon. It's a model number WIT WIT02. Output 1080p, 1080i. Has a range of 1,200 feet, which is about 350, 360 meters, 365 meters. 17 dBm transmission power, 7.4 to 16.8 volts operating, 5.5 watts. You can use it with smartphones to receive the, the video signal, the Apple iPhone and the Androids. Uh, 7 and above and ISO 8 above, weighs 2, 25 kilos, I won't tell you the phone number and all that. <laughs> Let's get it open. I had to wait, these were out of stock, a lot of things were out of stock due to COVID. I've had deliveries 80 to 90 days from China, ordering on eBay. You have that problem of slow deliveries, but then you also have the problem of nil stock, out of stock. And manufacturing has been terribly affected. And then the third biggest problem that it concerns us all is the massive price heights. I looked for a stepper motor driver and it was they out of stock and in September they were $80 each. Now they're back in stock and they're $110. Here's the manual. 12 pages are in English. Here are Two units. Okay, what do we got here? Join our Facebook group to get the extended warranty. So if you're a Facebooker, you're gonna get an extended warranty. Everyone else, stuff ya. <laughs> I'm not on Facebook. Bad enough on YouTube. No one looks at the videos. So these are the two units. Yeah, you say, okay, great. What's the difference? Transmitter written on that one, receiver on that one. Look much the same that way. Dual HDMI. So the transmitter. So the receiver. Single. So it's got transmitter and receiver on both of them. It's got one mounting hole. It's got the helical insert. Seems like metal. Could be die cast aluminium. So that's the two units. So you have your transmitter on your camera. Now on your camera is a monitor. And this is a transmitter, right? It's the sender signal. It's got the dual output. What do you connect the second output to? This comes out and into your monitor. So you can't take the raw signal anywhere else. So if you want to relay the signal, it has to be on your monitor. And that has to have the dual. I would have thought it would have been more versatile to have it on the receiver, a dual. But no. So that's the only mounting hole. It looks like the spacing for the ARRI. Not the feel good. <laughs> if you watch the other videos, you know what I mean. I'm just trying to look at it and figure, okay, I want to mount this here. Here's a transmitter. Got the battery pack. Okay, could make up a hot shoe mount. Could make a hot shoe mount. Better show you what I'm talking about. Could make a hot shoe mount. Hot shoe mount. Hot shoe mount. So that's the three positions. Like I said in the monitor one, they, they said they had a one that had a bracket had just fitted in. But there's no dovetail. I mean they could have machined this with a tapered dovetail like your V-mount batteries but you know just just a 1 in 5 dovetail, 1 in 15, you know, 3 degree whatever. It could just slide in. They could have fitted some quarter holes here, here, here to make it fit. Put NATO rail here, here, 
here there's so many areas that it could have just in the design you know you, you do a cast there's a flat cast you can just put all the ribs in it they can just do a cast in that shape when it's on the gimbal you got to try to find a spot where this is going to go without interfering with the aerials and all that sort of stuff straight away just getting out of the box it's going to be difficult to mount. Maybe big cameras, you know, professional cameras, they got all the room. It's not a set of pencils or cigars, that's the aerials. A bit more sensible. If you go back to the video on the arm there and even here, you tighten up your screw and it moves because aluminium sitting on anodized aluminium sitting on anodized aluminium, fairly smooth. They have put a rubber insert so they've machined out thumb nut and I just put a groove in and put a big rubber washer in and if you remember where I said replacing the bracket arm the monitor bracket with two pieces of nylon that's how the principle would work you have two pieces and they rub against each other and then when you tighten them they're not moving look even like that's very difficult to move a lot more difficult than that bracket that's all you have to do to replace those with these and you're laughing yeah, these are, these are 3 8. Sometimes they have metal, but sometimes there's a plastic. So, this has got a large 3 8 and a small quarter. These are only quarter, the tap quarter. So, just sitting that high, like on normal ones, the normal hot shoe, this one here will now sit that high. And this is something else I don't like. All these machines are controlled by CNC. So what does that mean? That means they're predictable and repeatable. So you can say, right, we'll start a thread here and we'll go that long and stop it there. And every one it makes starts there, stops there. Whereas a guy winding a handle, like I used to, not as precise. What that means is that they could work out where the thread stopped. So as this little bracket is tight in here, it's square. So now, because it's cockeyed, it sits on there, out of square. So your yeah, cables, instead of saying going that, going down the angle. To get that to line up, you have to have it <laughs> that loose. Instead of having a lock nut, sorry, my bad. I don't mind admitting me and I'm wrong. Or like quarter return. Then you tighten the bottom one down. Then you fit the top one up. Let's just see how secure it is. Oop. Let's tighten it up. Now that's tight. Let's see how secure it is. Remember in the other videos I said you had the your screw and the weight and it was on that side and that could be loosening it so you bump over, go a rough road, it loosens it, but on that side the rough road tightens it. There it's tight, but here it gets loose. I think we should start going away from screw threads and go with the NATO dovetail locks, something that clamps down and doesn't rotate. Still slides, easy to undo. So, that's where that has to go. If this is away from the, the cable cam, so we'll just pretend that it's no longer there. This is the only spot for it on the gimbal. So counterweight and all that sort of stuff. But wait, there's more. Take these off. Put that on there. That on there. Just making sure that's all tight. And put that on there. As you can see, it is fairly high for the, the gimbal. So I'll have to be looking at ways to make it fit. Originally I was hoping to be able to fit it onto a monitor mount, that type of thing. I don't think it's going to work. It looks like these are cap screws. Depending on what I can pull off, I might be able to make a bracket that will fit on, slide in somewhere, angle bracket that will bolt on. You see most of them sit up under the gimbal. Now the battery pack, which will be the next video, will fit in there. So how do you mount it, how do you hold it, and how do you stop these from being in the shop. So I would like that, I don't like that somehow, and make it slide in and out so as you can get to the, to the buttons. That's all what's in there, another set, 
no HDMI cables. I'm looking at getting the flexible type that they use in quadcopters, that type of thing. They're not really got shielding on them. I don't know how well insulated they are from cross uh, electrical interference. As you can see, for me, it's just not a matter of pulling them out of the box, putting the battery on, and off you go. Mounting's a problem. It was just there, fine. But as you saw in the other videos, the batteries are quite big. So the HDMI cable. If you remember in the, in the monitor, the curve was as big as your hand. That means that has to come down. So if anything's sitting there, that's going to hit it. It has to be HDMI cable. They can fit between the gimbal, gimbal motor, because that's shoved up right that way. So that has to come up. Then it has to come straight up there to if the monitor was on it, when the monitor is on it. But the monitor won't be on the gimbal. So it has to come straight up there. This is a transmitter up there, 90 up, across, 90 down. Under there, 90 down, 90 left. So depending on the position of this, whether it's on the gimbal, not on the gimbal, whether the monitor is attached, all this sort of stuff. As you can see, it's just not a video that is for today. That's why it's a boxing and review. The field tests are coming where it's all, all connected up before it goes on the gimbal. The next video will be the batteries. I'll drag out whatever HMI cables I've got laying around. And they're probably, you know, three foot long, four foot long. And I'll connect that up. That's just to plug the batteries in, get it to work. I'll order the HMI cables. And when they arrive, then we'll do the proper field tests. So if you've got any questions, don't forget to subscribe and look for the final one in the series. And if this is your first video, look at the others in the series. And as always, thanks for watching.